from Turnkey. Um, hey, I'm Jeff. I'm Jeff Lieber from uh, Turnkey Product Management. Take it over, Jenna. Yeah. So today we kind of just wanted to go through a little bit of a presentation of what we do um, and you know who we are. So uh, we're going to just start a little bit of a presentation for you now. All right. Share screen. Can you guys see my screen? Jeff, can you see my screen? <laughs> yep. Yeah, it looks Perfect. good. And then we'll walk through, you know, mainly like if you were going to sell on Amazon, what, you know, hopefully this, you can walk away with some tips for, you know, how to get launched on Amazon yourself or how to grow your sales. So uh, hopefully this will be helpful for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So our presentation today is going to be really like the first step of Amazon and uh, what it takes. Uh, so first, I kind of wanted to start out by, you know, explaining what turnkey is, uh, what we do. Uh, so we are an Amazon consulting company. So another way to look at it as uh, your Amazon sales partner. Uh, so what that kind of looks like is we're there from start to finish. So we'll set up your Amazon account. We'll put together the listing. We'll help you pick out the right images, create the sales copy, everything like that. And then once you're set up, uh, we'll come up with review strategies. How are we going to get reviews? Uh, what's the best way to get reviews? And then we also come up with sales strategies, you know, running promo codes, lightning deals, things like that. Uh, we also specialize in Amazon paid per click. Uh, Amazon paid per click is a little different than, you know, Facebook ads or Google ads. So basically what we do is we go in there frequently and we'll optimize those ads and basically turn off those unprofitable keywords, boost up those profitable keywords, and then come up with new ideas like, you know, targeting competitors or running head search ads. So there's a lot that we do for um, Amazon ads that we also would help you with. Um, we also help you put together a customer service system, uh, what that looks like with Amazon, things like that kind of help you build up what you should be doing. Um, we also help with any business automation you might need um, when you have Amazon coming on with your business. And then lastly, we do one-on-one -on -one coaching. So a lot of our clients like to know what, how do I set up a promo code? How do I create a shipment? And we'll help you do those things just in case for some reason we can't, we can't be there when you need the promo code or when you do need to create your first shipment, we'll help you out with that. So that's kind of, you know, what we are, what we do. We have a large range of clients across a ton of different categories. Um, with all of our clients, we're doing over 1 million a month on Amazon alone. So yeah, so that's pretty much turnkey and what we do. So uh, Jeff's going to take it away from here. Great. So uh, yeah, well, right now we're going to talk about a couple of our biggest success stories real quick, and then we'll dive into some helpful content. So first, um, just wanted to show you some examples of what's possible on Amazon. Uh, these are two of our uh, top performing clients where they were okay with us sharing their sales numbers. Um, and so, yeah, you can see here in the past 30 days for the top client there on top, uh, it's sold almost $417,000, uh, selling over 18,000 units in the past month. And then for the client below that, that's a different brand uh, in the beverage niche. And they're sold over $360,000 on Amazon uh, alone uh, in the past 30 days. Um, so, yeah, click on to the next one. So, right now, we're just going to quickly run through. Why should you be selling on Amazon? Uh, if you know, probably a lot of you already are on Amazon, so I'm just going to fly through this. But if you're not on Amazon, we'll, we'll cover why you should you should strongly consider it. So reason number one, obviously, uh, most people know Amazon is the largest online store in the entire world. Um, you know, e-commerce is just continually chipping away and, and taking a larger piece of the pie of total, you know, retail sales. Uh, it used to be all brick and mortar and retail, and now, you know, Amazon and other online sites are taking over, and Amazon is by far the largest, so they already have that huge pool of traffic of buyers looking for products like yours, and, uh, you know, if you're not on there, you're missing out on a huge opportunity. Reason number two, Amazon has the equation for success. Um, they just grow like crazy every single year, every single quarter. Um, it just keeps, you know, setting new, uh, you know, breaking through the ceiling. 
you know, from their Amazon Prime membership and, you know, their customer reviews, they have your credit card on file. If you're an Amazon member, um, they have, you know, a great search algorithm to put the best products in front of the members. So, you know, with having over 90 million Amazon Prime members, um, you know, a lot of people that are a Prime member, they will only shop on Amazon, like they, they own, you know, that they pay for a Prime membership. And so they will often only, you know, when they have to go buy anything, you know, kitchen stuff or, you know, coffee stuff or, you know, physical products, anything of that nature, you know, they're going to only shop on Amazon. And so if you're not there, um, you know, you, they, they're going to choose somebody else. And then reason number three is um, unlike social media, um, you know, where, you know, it's great to put ads in front of people on social media and, and, you know, on, on different websites for your products. And that can be really great. And a lot of our clients do do that as well. But the difference with Amazon is people on there are, are they, are they on Amazon because they want to buy something right now and they have that buyer's intent versus on social media. If you put an ad in front of them, um, for your product, you know, they're not on there looking for your product. They're looking for, you know, just relaxing or having fun or sharing photos, catching up with friends. So, uh, why Amazon is such a great place to advertise and to, you know, list your products for sale. Reason number four, uh, you can literally take over the world with Amazon. Amazon is now expanding into nearly every continent um, and so many countries now. And it's very easy to switch over, you know, from just Amazon.com in the U.S. You can basically, you know, kind of copy those same product pages and all the content that you already have. And you just easily duplicate it to Europe or Canada or Japan. They just launched in Australia is, is, is coming up the pipeline. And so... Um, you know, it really has a scalability factor to it and it's, uh, really, um, you know, it's there for the, for the taking, but amazon.com is the, the best place to start because us market is so much bigger than all the others. And so definitely start there if you're just starting out. Reason number five, um, Amazon should be, um, in my opinion, for almost every company out there that sells physical products has a brand. I don't recommend that Amazon should be your only sales channel. We just strongly believe and have seen the success uh, from our clients that it should be an additional sales channel for you. Um, almost all of our clients, they also sh sell on Shopify or on their own website, or um, they also sell, you know, on Walmart or walmart.com, um, you know, uh, listing on social media and, and Facebook, um, you know, trying to get into retail, Target, Bed Bath & Beyond, stores like that. Those are all great, and that's going to increase the, um, you know, the sellable value of your company. It's going to increase the probability of your success by having multiple sales channels so that you're not reliant on just one. If you currently just only do Facebook ads to Shopify, and that's your whole business, well, if Facebook you know, changes their ads or all of a sudden competition floods in on Facebook, um, you're going to, you know, you're running a risky business with only one sales channel. So it's really good to diversify. Um, and it's very hard to manage all of them. So definitely try to take one at a time or hire, you know, experts or companies that can help, help assist with certain sales channels to help you grow a very sound and well-rounded business. For reason number six, um, that's all that we got. We got five. Weeks. <laughs> that's all you need. Um, so yeah, is that it, Jenna? Now you're up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so now I'm kind of just going to go through, um, oh, sorry. Um, now I'm just going to kind of go through, you know, the first step, you know, what our turnkey team does when we get a client, uh, kind of go through, you know, what we're looking for when we're doing a competitor analysis or, you know, what we see when we're, you know, looking at a client and what we're about to take on. So we're kind of just going to go through that um, so you can see what we do. Um, so, you know, before you invest in paid per click ads, before you take the time to get reviews from past customers, before you send traffic from Facebook ads or Google ads, the most crucial part is perfecting your listing because you want to set a good face. You want this to look the best way possible before you send any traffic to your listing. Uh, so that's kind of where we always start, where our team always starts. And that's what we examine first is how is this appearing to customers? Um, so we're going to, I kind of want to like compare this so you can kind of see a visual of why this one with the white background looks way better than this one. That's most likely on a coffee table. First of all, 
to meet Amazon's requirements, your main image has to be a white background image that they will take down your listing if you do not have a white background image. So that's the first thing. Another thing is you want to come off professional. You don't want to look like someone that is, I don't know, selling this out of their garage or something like that. Or, you know, you want to make this look like this is a class product. This is the top notch product. And that's what this conveys when it has a white flat background. Uh, so that's kind of to give you a visual of, you know, the starting point, the main image, you know, you want to perfect that main image and kind of get, put your best foot forward with it. So here's our main image tips. So one thing that is incredibly cool that not a lot of people do is include the packaging in your main image. So for example, obviously we know the product we're buying is the water bottle. You know, we know that we're buying a water bottle because we need water, obviously. But you want to see the packaging. You want to see what am I actually buying? What is, what is it going to look like when it gets to my doorstep? So that's why we always try to get our clients to have packaging included in the main image. So this completely meets Amazon's, you know, uh, policies because it has the all white background. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind, you know, when you're starting out with a product, you know, and you're thinking about images, you only want to invest in images, you know, a handful of times. So you want to do it right the first time. So definitely something to keep in mind when you're doing images with all white background. Um, another thing, you want it to be large. You know, Nutella, for example, that's kind of a smaller product, but you don't want it to be small. Uh, you want to make sure that you're checking that your images are big um, on, on a computer or on mobile. You want to make sure they're coming off as large, even if it isn't a large product, because they need to see the details. They want to see the logo. They want to see 200 calories. Oh, that's a lot of calories. They want to see all this stuff though. You know, so that's important to customers to kind of get that visual. So, you know, a trick that we do is, is we kind of just crop it so that it is a little bit closer, a little bit more honed in on the important things. So, and then another cool thing is, you know, make it a lifestyle image if possible, if this applies to your product. So for example, if, if we were to just see this brush, laying on a flat white surface, we might not even know what it is. But since they're able to show that this is what we use it for, this is what we do, uh, it, it definitely, you know, conveys the message a lot better to the customer. Uh, so, you know, if this applies to you, I would definitely take advantage of it. You know, maybe a food product, it, it wouldn't make sense. But a product like, like a brush, it makes total sense. You want to see how this brush would work on your dog. Uh, so it makes total, it makes, you know, it makes good sense to try to do this. Uh, and then lastly, when you're, when you're setting up that main image, when you're first starting out, we always recommend that we all double check on mobile because what if it can look awesome on your desktop, but then on mobile, it's too small or people can't read the text. So, you know, we always do a mobile check and this goes for everything. This goes for the title, the bullet points, things like that. Sometimes they can't see. So this is kind of a good example. You know, these speakers probably aren't that big, but on mobile, they look pretty large. You know, you, you know, the product you're getting, you know, customers can see what they're looking at. So um, that's definitely something we always tell people to do is check it on mobile, make sure it's looking top notch on mobile because I think it's, it's close to like 60% or maybe even 70% of Amazon customers are buying mobile. They're not buying on their desktop. They're not, they're buying on their phone or on their tablet. So that, that, you know, that frame looks different, um, than what it looks like on desktop when you're setting it up. So something to keep in mind, definitely down the road. Um, so Jeff, do you want to kind of take it away and explain this sales copy magic of why this is better than that? <laughs> yeah, sure. So um, when you're writing sales copy, so Amazon gives you, you know, a certain amount of uh, real estate space to put your um, sales copy. And so what we're looking at here is, is the most important space for, you know, communicating the benefits of your product. So on the left hand side here, we have five really well done bullet points. On the right hand side, we have five very short and you know incomplete sentences and you know it doesn't you know it, it it's not using the space that amazon gives you and if you look at amazon you'll see this a lot and this is one of the easiest things to fix that can really boost your conversion rate so um 
on the left hand side, you'll see, you know, take advantage of like having that short, punchy, all cap sentence to communicate what, what is the benefit of your product? Don't just say, oh, we sell, you know, whatever, uh, a horsehair brush, you know, that doesn't really mean anything to people, but explain, you know, why that works. So an original glide through brush, right? Letting them know what that benefit is. Um, the best at removing knots and tangles, right? They're communicating what the benefit of their uh, product is. And so, um, you know, so if a customer has that pain point and that's what they're on there to solve because their, you know, their dog has knots in their hair or whatever, then um, that, that's going to speak to them and they're going to resonate and be like, oh, this must solve my problem. So really take advantage of the space, I believe. Jenna, you have 250 characters per bullet point. Is that right? It depends on the category. So that is something that is important because, you know, certain categories, you only get 100 characters, but other categories, you can get 200. So um, as, you know, as we're setting up our listings, you know, our team, that's something we look at before we even mm -hmm. create the sales copy because you want to know what you're working with. Um, so, you know, one thing I wanted to go over, Jeff mentioned the why, you know, why would people buy your product? So here's some little tricks you know, to finding the why. So you want to think, why should this customer buy your product? You know, think about it. Why would they want this? And then use that as your caps, you know, punchline, you know? Another thing to think about is how will this product help them? Why did you create this product? I mean, I'm sure a lot of you, the reason you created the product was to solve a problem that you had. So think about it like that. How is this going to solve their problem? Um, what makes your product different? You know, a lot of our clients, the reason that we're drawn to them is because they might have a product that, you know, other people are making, but there's something a little different with their product. So use that as your punchline. That's important. That little, that little difference is definitely important. Um, and then what are your customers saying? A lot of the time, what we'll do is we'll go through the customer reviews if they already have some. And say, why, what, what are customers saying? Like some people, if it's a dog brush, they'll say, oh my gosh, the tangles, they're gone now. Like they, all these brushes used to break when my dog would brush, when I would brush my dog's hair. So, you know, that's kind of a good example of going through your reviews and see what your customers are saying about your product. It will be incredibly helpful. And also you can learn a little bit about your product, right? See what people are using it for. Um, and then how did this, you know, product benefit the last past customers? So you can even go as far as asking like your Facebook followers or, um, asking, you know, emailing past customers like, Hey, tell me a little bit about your experience. What did you like? What did you not like? What problem did this solve? You know, the, your customers are using your product probably daily, probably more than you are. So it's something to consider when you're thinking about your why and what you need, um, to include with that. All right. And then Jeff, go ahead and tell them a little bit about the title and how we put that together. Yeah. And then one more note uh, on top of what Jenna said is, well, well, another step that we do at Turnkey, and you can do this yourself, um, is also to, to go study your competitors' reviews and go study your competitors' product pages because they've done the homework as well. And you can find out, you know, what are they doing well? What are they not doing well? Um, what are their pain points in their customers' reviews? And then you can incorporate that into your product as well as into your sales copy and your images. So um, that's really, really helpful for us. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. And so, yeah, so speaking to the title, so that's the one that's, you know, going to show up in the search results. Um, the title is absolutely critical. Um, that's one of the first, that's probably the first thing that the customer is going to read when they're scanning through. So it's kind of a tough balancing act because there's a couple things you want to accomplish. One, you want to mention what your product features are here. Um, and you also will have a character limit. You know, it might be 250 characters in your category, but you know, if you try to put 250 and then Amazon says, Oh no, it won't upload because it's, you know, 150 for your category, then that's what you have to work with. So make sure that you maximize your character count. Now, the other thing is that the title is the best place to put your most important, high volume search for keywords in your title for, you know, not to get too technical, but like Amazon search algorithm, it's kind of like Google SEO. Um, the, Amazon looks to your title, what keywords are in your title, and then they're going to give that the most weight 
um, as far as their algorithm and try to rank you for those keywords. So, you know, put dog, cat, brush, pet, you know, all those things, all those different variations of keywords, you want to kind of stack them into your title. Um, but at the same time, you want to really balance it and not go too crazy where it just, it's not even readable. It's not even legible where you're just like, you know, like, so, so it's always good to run it by, you know, just a friend or, um, a couple of friends and say, Hey, how does this look? You know, does this read well to you? Um, sometimes you can get lost in the details trying to get too many keywords stuffed in there. So it's kind of a, a balancing act. So hopefully that's helpful. Yeah, definitely. So I kind of wanted to go over, you know, exactly what Jeff said, you know, kind of give you examples of, you know, a similar product. These both are the same exact product, but which one would you buy? They're almost <laughs> the same price. So price shouldn't really matter. But I mean, they clearly are pointing, they aren't pointing anything out here. I know that it's um, my magic mud activated charcoal toothpaste. That's all I know. I don't know why I should buy this or what the key features are. Um, so here's, you know, a really good example of someone using every single character that they're given, putting in very good keywords. So, you know, here's an example. Cali White Activated Charcoal and Organic Coconut Oil Teeth Whitening Toothpaste. Made in the U USA, natural whitener, vegan, fluoride-free, sulfate-free, zero peroxides for sensitive teeth, safe for kids, mint. I'm assuming they mean mint flavor. That's probably the only part that I'm questioning here. But, but you know, it covers a lot of things. You know, the fact that it's organic, that matters to some people, you know? The fact that it's made in the USA, that matters to a lot of people. Natural whitener. So, you know, it's, it's not bad for you. That's a good sign. The fact that it's vegan, fluoride-free. These are fluoride-free, sulfate-free. These are important when you're looking for toothpaste, you know? That's very important to a lot of people. So, these are two different examples, you know, kind of showing, you know, a basic title where you're not really putting much thought into it, not putting all that keyword research into there. So you can definitely, you can almost guarantee that this, the bottom toothpaste is most likely showing up more often than this My Magic Mud toothpaste. And you can, you can obviously tell looking at this, you know, this is a more expensive product by 49 cents, but still more expensive technically. Um, but you know, this is 1,400 reviews versus 200 reviews. So clearly more people are buying this. A lot of that probably started with the fact that they could find it easier. You know, you can't find this. If you were to look up sulfate free, this would show up over this because they have it in their title. And that's the like Jeff said, that's the most important part for the keywords is that it's in the title. Uh, so that's definitely something to keep in mind. Um, something that's incredibly important and you want to make sure it's readable. I, I would say this is, you know, the bottom one is relatively readable. They can definitely work on that, uh, but they're getting a lot of things accomplished in that time. Um, so Jeff's going to talk about, you know, perfecting the image blocks and we're going to kind of go a little bit in detail with that. Yeah. So on Amazon, the image blocks, that's basically what we're talking about. There is, you know, when you click on a, a product, um, you know, that you select out of the search results, you go to the product page, and then in the upper left, you're obviously going to see the main image, and then typically you'll see, you know, about nine total image slots. Um, and you might notice that some companies will only have one image because that's all that Amazon technically requires. Um, and then there's just no other images supplied. They're just, you know, like those companies that are doing that, they're just missing out on so much because, uh, you know, your competition is going to use that space, use all nine image blocks, put infographics, put, um, you know, if you're selling anything with nutrition labels, you know, put the, the calorie count and all that good stuff. Um, so it's really, really critical that you use all of the space as well. Um, and if possible, some sellers are eligible to add video um, in, you know, to be that, that the bottom of the image block. You've probably seen that before where there's a little play button. And um, if you have that ability um, usually you have to qualify for it, um, you know, by going through a number of steps and, and getting to a certain sales level and hopefully you'll get to that one day. Or if you haven't launched on Amazon yet, you can reach out to us and we can help with our, cause we have a contact at Amazon that can help set up the account. Um, basically tagged as like a managed account and basically gets you extra benefits like adding in a video to your product listing, um, which most, most sellers don't have that. Um, so yeah, 
hopefully that was helpful. And Jenna's going to go in a little bit more detail. Yeah, awesome. So as as I was, you know, mentioning, we already talked about the main image, but can't hurt to go over it one more second. So like I said, that white background is there, as you can see, but also they have that packaging. You know, it kind of shows the full picture of what they're getting. You know, maybe someone wants to give this as a gift. Now they have more of an example of what they're going to be given. So here's, here's a few images that are very important. And these are things that not all sellers are doing. So if you do it, you're special. You know, you are taking that extra step that other sellers are not. So for example, you know, if you're looking at this for your dog, one of these images shows this holds two cups of food. Now you know, hey, does my dog eat two cups of food or do they eat more? Will this fit what I need? Um, and then it also shows the size, you know, does, is this size, you know, doable for my kitchen or wherever I'm putting this? Does this fit where I'm going to be putting this? Um, you know, that's important, you know these features are crucial and these are things that maybe you didn't have room to put these in the sales copy, but you have an image that shows it. Um, another cool thing that I really liked from this listing was um, these non-skid rubber feet, like showing that this isn't your, you know, my dog, for example, he's pushing the bowl all around the, the kitchen. This would be incredibly helpful if it had, you know, rubber feet on the, on the bottom. And that's what they're showing. They're showing a really key feature here that maybe not all dog bowls have. Um, so that's definitely really important to, you know, it's a good place to point out key features and why people should buy your product. Um, so then we're going to kind of go into actually, this is my favorite part of images. And I feel like this is really where companies can kind of put their stamp on it and where they can kind of show what they're all about. Um, so, I mean, I'm not sure if you've ever seen dog bowls like these. I've actually never seen this before, but when I was preparing for this presentation, I was looking at this and I was like, what, why is this, you know, bowl the way it is? Well, they actually had an infographic to explain it to me. So the reason that this bowl has all these little, you know, valleys and everything like that is it prevents dogs from choking because it slows down their eating because they have to, you know, track it. So I thought that was incredibly cool, but it, it made it even better that they explained it. So, you know, it's a food safety material. It prevents food spillage and sliding, prevents bloat and canine obesity. I'm not sure if your dog suffers from bloating, but if you do, this would be helpful. And then it's also dishwasher safe. So, you know, for a lot of people, that's important. And, you know, you, you wonder, why, why do I need this? Well, they just explained it to you in an image. And the other thing I really liked that they really took it the next step was this image over here. Um, explaining the differences between their dog bowl and, you know, common dog bowls. You know, they're not saying a specific competitor because you're not allowed to do that. Just FYI, you're not allowed to do that. Um, but, you know, saying other common bowls. So, you know, they're saying other common bowls, your dog can eat fast and they're easy to get fat. That's <laughs> easy to get fat or get sick with their bowl. It slows down the rapid eating. It makes them eat slower and then that makes them healthier. Um, so these are honestly fantastic examples and a great way to show the features, show what, show your why, you know, things like that. And even, especially if you have like kind of a different product, this stuff's important because some people be, must, might be like, I don't get it. Well, explain it to them. Use the infographic. It's important. This is, this is actually the fun part, you know, coming up with things like that makes it more fun, I think. Um, so, you know, just like a little bit of a refresher of what we went through today to talk about what our team does is the first step. You know, we perfect that main image. Um, we get that sales copy magic going, you know, finding the why, finding why customers buy it, finding out, you know, the, the key benefits. Um, we talked about taking advantage of that title, making sure they're full of keywords, making sure that character limit is completely reached, uh, making sure all the important information is put into the title. And then we talked about perfecting that image block, um, hopefully taking advantage of video if you're one of the lucky few that gets chosen. Um, and then making sure you're taking advantage of infographics, you know, making sure you're using lifestyle images, you know, things like that. Show your product being used. So that's kind of what we went over today. Um, so Jeff's going to kind of, you know, talk about, you know, what's next. Yeah, thanks. So basically, if, if you're already on Amazon, um, I, would, I would really go through this presentation. And, and yeah, like she said, like those are the building blocks that we just covered. Like it's the blocking and tackling of, you know, success on Amazon. Like you got to have those pieces in place because that will give you a high converting page. You know, hopefully your conversion rate will be 
15% or 20% of visitors will just buy, right? Now, if your conversion rate's like 3% or 4%, um, you know, then you don't want to drive, you know, thousands of dollars of traffic to it and be spending a ton of time doing that. You need to fix your conversion rate first. So what we went over today is just some of the, the quick tips to like help get your conversion rate higher. And then once you get the page looking great and ready to convert customers, well, you know, I wish that it was that easy. And then all of a sudden your sales would just skyrocket to hundreds of thousands of dollars. But unfortunately, um, you know, now you got to go on to the next steps. And we're going to talk about this, um, I believe, in our next like office hours that we're going to do um, probably in the next month or so. Um, and we'll get into more advanced strategies, what to do next. Um, but just as a high level, you got to get customer reviews, right? Think about it from, you know, your own personal shopping perspective. If you're, are you going to buy a product that has, you know, 250, four and a half star reviews, or what if your product only has three reviews and it's three stars, you know, no one's going to buy your product. So how do you get reviews? And just as a heads up, I mean, you may already know, but Amazon about over a year ago, I believe it was like November of 2016, they changed their uh, customer review policy so that they no longer allow incentivized reviews. It used to be very easy to get five star reviews. Um, you could basically just bribe, bribe people to do it. Um, and now unfortunately it's not that hard, but it's actually a good thing because it weeds out all of the, you know, the people that are gaming the system and just paying their way to the top. So now you got to earn the reviews and there's a lot of strategies that we use, um, that can help get those reviews. That's one of the most important things and it's very difficult, um, to do. Um, and so yeah, get reviews. And then once you get your reviews up, maybe you get to, you know, 10, 25 reviews, then you can start playing with getting some traffic, whether it's coming from your email list, social media, um, or uh, Facebook ads, or, you know, something of that nature. Or, you know, one of our favorite strategies is using Amazon advertising. Um, Amazon has its own advertising platform, just like how Facebook has their advertising platform, Google has theirs, Amazon has theirs. And it is um, just an incredibly profitable um, place to advertise. And uh, there's a lot to it with you know, setting up keywords and different sort of campaign groups and tracking it and optimizing it and all of that. And, and we can talk about that in a later call, but make sure that you do at least attempt that and, and put some money into it just to see how it goes. Um, but it, it is, uh, so w once you get those building blocks, the next step is traffic and that's how you're going to get momentum and get that snowball effect where if you're doing all these things every single month and it's growing and growing, then eventually, you know, hopefully you'll get to hundreds of thousands of dollars a month or depending on your niche, um, whatever that would be. Um, and so I think, uh, is that it, Jenna? Oh yeah. yeah. So if you, if you have any more questions, like, you know, anything that we talked about, if it wasn't clear or whatever, feel free to reach out. You can go to our website, turnkeyproductmanagement.com, or you can email us. We listed our personal emails there for the company. So feel free to shoot us any questions that you have. Um, we would be happy to, uh, to help. And, um, yeah. And I think, uh, you know, that's, that's, uh, all we got. And I think maybe yeah. we're going to open it up to some questions. We had some questions that were submitted and if, if we have any time left, I don't know how much time we have left. Yeah. We um, have time. Yeah. I'll stop sharing right now. Okay. Um, yeah. So it looks like we have a few questions here. Um, so, uh, Jeff, what do you feel is the most important piece to selling a product on Amazon? Uh, the most important piece to selling a product on Amazon. Um, I mean, I guess probably what we talked about today is you got is making sure you at least have the building blocks first. You, without those building blocks and a beautiful page and using all the images and the reviews and sales copy, like you're just not going to be successful. So make sure you have the basics down first before doing the fancier stuff is probably the best way to get started. Yeah. Um, and then uh, how long do you think it takes for a product to really grow on Amazon? Like what is, what is your personal opinion on that? Um, honestly, like it's, it can be crazy how fast it can happen. Um, I'm trying to think how like, when we, we started with one of our clients and they were, they were at $20,000 a month. Actually, that was your, your client, Jenna. Mm -hmm. They started at 20 K a month and then they needed help. They were overwhelmed. They were facing all these issues. And so they called us and 
um, brought us in to help and our team helped them out and, you know, ended up, we're, you know, still helping them today. And uh, it went from 20,000 a month to uh, I think over $200,000 a month within like 80 or 90 days. And yeah. our best month was that we hit over 300,000 a month. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the best month was over 300,000. So, so yeah, I mean, it, it can definitely just take off. Like we even just started working with a client, you know, what, like three weeks ago, Jeff. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, we kind of just did, we put the building blocks together actually. And I, I want to say they went from selling, you know, 1000 a day to we're up to 5,000 a day. And this has happened over, you know, 14 days. So, I mean, already five times the amount they're already selling. So it really does, you know, depend on the client, I think. Um, but that's, you know, that's kind of the challenge of it. You know, that's what's exciting about it. And it it's definitely varies from category to category, I think, as well. Um, and then let's see, maybe I'll take this one. What is the biggest challenge with setting up a listing? Um, you know, I think the biggest challenge with setting up a listing is, you know, the competitor analysis part where that's kind of where you start, you know, you, you go and see what are your competitors doing? Uh, why are they successful and how can we beat them? So, you know, I, you know, I think, you know, that's kind of a cool challenge and you can see how can we beat them in the sense of, you know, maybe we should offer an ebook or maybe we should have this promotion that they don't have. So it's kind of a cool challenge where you're thinking, how can we beat this competitor? Um, let's see. Uh, the next question, how long can it take for a listing to be fully set up? Um, I'll take this one too. Uh, you know, it can kind of vary. Um, it depends on the assets you have. Like, do you have those images ready that, um, Jeff and I were discussing? Do you have that plain white background? Do you have those lifestyle images? Do you have infographics? You know, it really does depend on the assets you already have. Um, so I think that's kind of important going into it. And if, if you are to give us a call, you know, it depends really on the assets. Um, but I'd say, you know, a month, I I feel comfortable saying, you know, it'll take a month, you know, to get the listing up, get the sales copy up, get inventory in if it's not already in. Um, so yeah. Um, okay. So Jeff, maybe you'll take this one out of all of the steps it takes to get a listing ready. Which do you think is the most important piece? Um, I mean, you gotta have all the building blocks. There's not like one that you gotta have, but Um, you gotta have them all, but I guess you at least want a a good main image, you know, Mm -hmm. it's, it's worth investing, you know, a few hundred bucks or 500 bucks into like, you know, a white background photo shoot with a, with a, you know, someone that has a professional camera. Um, because if you're just taking it on your, on your bed sheet or something like that with your, with your iPhone, you know, like it's going to be tough to sell a product, you know um to, to your competitors you know who are who may be invested hundreds or thousands of dollars into their photos right um, that's what i would say unless you have a different opinion no i i totally agree i i think i think that main image is incredibly important i also think like the title too like if the title isn't you know top notch they're not even going to click in my opinion but definitely the main image and then i think the title next Mm-hmm. Um, so that I think this question also would fit you, Jeff. So you mentioned that multiple sales channels are important. Why is that? And do you, and do the multiple sales channels influence your success on Amazon? Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, I, I started on Amazon like over four and a half years ago. Um, and, and then I sold that, uh, it was a pet products company. Maybe that's why we do all the dog brush, uh, examples, <laughs> but, Makes it easier. <laughs> Anyways, I sold that company uh, a little while back, but so in, in going through that process of, of selling that company, like I just know from experience, you know, in talking with, uh, you know, with, with business brokers and, and buyers who wanted to buy and, you know, um, it's always good, um, you know, like it increases the, the multiple that you can get on your business and it also increases the value or, or the, you know, the, the, it reduces your risk in business. If you just think about it, if a hundred percent of your sales are on Amazon, um, you're a one trick pony, you know, you're a one legged stool that might fall down with at any time. But if you at least have, you know, say 10% of your sales on your Shopify store and 90% on Amazon, that's a much safer business than, than the hundred percent example. Now, ideally, you know, you can have whatever, you know, 
70% Amazon and 30% Shopify, or, or ideally would probably be like more like 25% Amazon, 25% uh, you know, Shopify, 25% retail, you know, like there's no perfect formula, but it depends on your niche and where, where, where your customers are and where it's good to sell, but it's just going to, you know, reduce the risk of your business going out of business or failing. If you have, if one channel falls or, or struggles, you have other ones that can pick up the slack. Yeah, definitely. Um, let's see the, ne the next question. Um, I can take this one. So is turnkey able to help if I want to sell internationally? Uh, definitely. So uh, this is something we're definitely experiencing with a lot of our clients who uh, a lot of them want to go out into Canada. Uh, we definitely think Canada is a good one and Canada is kind of cool because you have to have an English listing and you also have to have a French listing, which a lot of sellers don't take that extra step to create the French listing. So something to take advantage of. Um, some other international um, avenues that we think are incredibly profitable would probably be UK and Germany. Actually, a lot of people say Germany is, you know, one of the best uh, markets in, you know, the Europe uh, section. So, you know, definitely we would, we would help any client that wanted to take that step. That's something we are open to. Um, let's see, what kind of clients does turnkey usually work with? Hmm. Maybe, maybe you on this one, Jeff, what do you, what do you think? What's your ideal client? <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, for our, cause we have a couple of different offerings at turnkey. Now, if you want like the full service where, you know, we have a full dedicated team at our agency, that's basically like, you know, working every day and, and week, you know, basically managing your whole sales channel. The most ideal clients and successful clients we've had are, are brands that are already, you know, they're, they're doing well, um, and have a, a great products already. And, maybe they're doing at least $500,000 a year, you know, before, you know, joining with us. And hopefully that's, you know, on Shopify or on Amazon or wherever, you know, someone that, you know, that's a brand that really has a good product line. Um, ideally, like they're, they're actually doing multiple channels because they're, you know, a growing business and they have, you know, an advertising budget because they understand like, in order to really grow, you can't just always just rely on free organic traffic. You know, you, you can't grow to millions of dollars without spending a penny, you know, mm -hmm. um, and not, not everyone understands that. And that's okay. You know, you can do it whichever way you want, but the most successful clients we've seen, they understand that and they, they understand in investing in the business and investing for growth. Now, if you're not there um, and you, you know, you can't afford turnkey or, or, or you have the, the team or you have the people in house or you want to learn it yourself how to do Amazon. That's great. And I would highly recommend that too. If that's your, you know, it's going to be a, a, quite a learning curve. Um, and we help companies with that as well, where we don't do the full done for you. We can do like a done with you basically where we, we hand you over all the trainings and the videos and the, and the templates and the strategies and the launch list and, you know, all the steps that you need to do and checklists so that like, your team can take it, you know, over and, and you know, you take it and, and train your team to do it. And then you can also have support of, you know, Jenna or myself or our other managers as well, you know, for an hour, a couple hours a month and, you know, checking in and helping strategize and um, seeing how things are going and, and providing uh, support and training. So um, that's if you, you know, you're not quite at that level yet. Uh, we, we still are happy to help. And, you know, maybe one day you will be that to that level. So hopefully that's helpful. Yeah, definitely. Um, let's see, I'll, I'll take this one. So what product categories has turnkey worked with in the past, man, we, we are like across the spectrum. Like, so like Jeff, Jeff said, he started with the pet products. Uh, we work with like, I don't know, sunglasses, uh, stereos, uh, grooming products, beverages, supplements, uh, sports equipment, you know, we're kind of all across the spectrum. There, there isn't anything we're not interested in, you know, um, we love like food products. We think that's always awesome because, you know, you have repeat, you know, customers. Um, but you know, we're, we're willing to try any category and we believe a, any category can really be successful on Amazon if you play your cards right. So, uh, we're always willing to try out different categories, different clients, everything like that. Um, Let's see. Last question. In your experience, what products are the most successful? I think that kind of fits in with uh, what kind of clients does Turnkey usually work with. It's it's kind of those clients that are are willing to do go the extra step. Um, that means you know using some Facebook ads for 
for Amazon, right? Or, um, you know, willing to do that one percent that maybe someone else does. Like for example, Canada, you can, like I said, you can do an English listing or a French listing. That's how you're successful. Is if you do that that step that maybe not all um, Amazon sellers are doing. So I think that's what really sets some. Um, um, products apart from others is are you a part of that one percent of sellers that is doing that extra step? So yeah, I would agree there and and then also like and I think maybe we forgot to touch on this as well Like it's important to know what your niche on Amazon is You know, what is the sales potential in your niche because? Yeah, you can you know almost any product can be sold on Amazon but like there's metrics and, and softwares and tools out there that can help you very quickly uh, find out what is the, you know the, the top you know 20 sellers in your niche what are what are their sales their revenues per month on Amazon we have that data and we could we actually provide that just as like a free a freebie thing we'd be happy to do that if, if you guys didn't know how big your niche was because why that's helpful let's say that you're selling uh, you know paper clips, for example, you know, it's a dumb example, but let's just say you're, or, sorry if you're selling paper clips, that's, not, <laughs> that's that, that's good repeat business. Um, let's just say on, let's just say we looked at it on Amazon and we, we put it through our tools and then found out that the number one seller of paper clips on Amazon is selling only $15,000 per month. And the number two seller is only selling $2,000 a month, right? So that's like literally the first step that you should look at before you really invest time and money into Amazon. Because if you're a paperclip seller, I would not waste my time in that niche if that's the if that's the if those are the figures in the niche. Because you know that that ceiling, even if you work your butt off and whatever and, and do the strategies to get to the number one paperclip seller, well, your ceiling is fifteen thousand dollars per month in gross sales. That's not profits, you know. And so I would not waste you know, your time and, and you, and you know, it wouldn't be worth our time either. And we let companies know that if it's not a good fit. Now, on the other hand, if you're in a niche, like, you know, uh, you know, whatever supplements or sporting goods, stuff like that, where like if, if the product and the competitors are doing, if the number one guy is doing $700,000 a month, number two guys doing 600,000 a month, number three guys doing 400,000 a month, then that just shows very clearly and very quickly how, how much, uh, potential there is and that's a, a niche that that is worth you know really uh, investing into and, and looking at, at at launching on Amazon because um, the potential is there because that the, what's beautiful about that is even oftentimes you can be the number 20 seller in your category and if it's a big niche like that you can still be making a hundred thousand dollars a month on Amazon and you can be the number 20 person right that's awesome that's great you don't need to be number one to make money if you're in the right niche so um, if you're not sure or don't have the tools, like feel free to send us an email from that last slide and tell us what your niche is and we'll just run it for you and, and tell you what, uh, what, what, what your niche and competitors are doing. So um, yeah, uh, any more questions? Yeah, I think that's it for questions. So yeah, I think, I think we're all good and we right. really do appreciate you guys uh, checking out um, our presentation here. Yep, thank you very much. It was fun and uh, yeah, let us know if anything, you know, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out. We'll, we'll happy to help you guys. Thanks. Mm -hmm.